Yo, what's up? We're now outside my well, near my home, and behind me here, tada! This is Volkswagen ID4. It is the 82 kilowatt stunde version, rear wheel drive, and it's the max version. So it's pretty uh, pretty loaded with equipment. Um, it now has Nokia and Hakkapanita R3 studless tires because I'm going to go places where we could meet some snow so that's the reason for it but actually um oh yeah yeah, yeah. But, so by the way um today is friday right before uh, easter and i'm gonna be able to keep this car for and uh, borrow this car from Mölle, uh, which is the volkswagen importer for 12 days so big shout out to Mölle and volkswagen for providing me this car and for uh, prior prioritizing me so you know thank you guys i mean thank you Muller so much big th shout out to also um harald i met him today he's superb super nice guy he's you know on the top of Muller. and i also may ask specifically to get this make sure that the whole car is disinfected and he the boss personally inspected the car before i picked it up just to make sure uh, it was in perfect shape and he was wearing mask. He was wearing one time glove and everything. Yeah, good stuff. So, you know, you know, it goes both ways. I get the ID3 fairly early and I can keep it for a long time. And Mölle, they are super reactive. They said, do you want to borrow the new ID3 with the biggest battery? I'm like, oh yeah, thank you after this one. And also they said, if you need to test the tires, with summer tires. We can also arrange that. I'm like, oh yeah. You see, Muller and Volkswagen, they, they, they have figured out that if they take care of some uh, YouTuber, EV YouTuber like, like me, and just give him car and whatever he likes, he needs, they will get exposure. They're gonna get unbiased, honest review from me about this car and nobody paid me to do this so you guys paid me and youtube is paying me so uh, this is going to be a little bit the mixed video so <clears throat> this car has the the lead matrix headlights just like the id3 you guys know before um what else yeah I i'm not sure about the the windscreen here if it's uh, extra uh, like extra soundproof or whatever but let me see if I can show you here. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. the interior. So it reminds me of ID3, but I've been driving a lot of ID3s in the past, and I have to say I love the ID4 better. For example, we have a big, we have a bigger screen here, and um, I don't remember, but I think we have more center console. I can put all my shit here. I'm gonna live stream tomorrow. We also have a little space there, but it's not very usable because there's no edges and things can just gonna slide around. I have one time mask here, put some of my equipment here. We have ambient light. Interior is not the best, I have to say. Uh, like this is bare metal. But okay, but what is what matters for some people might be this. I don't know if you can see it. Hang on, it's kind of hard to focus. Anyway, we have double glazed windows for extra soundproofing. In the back, you got the, the, the door handles. I don't remember how the door handle in the model, in the ID3 was, but these are like, like this, you see? They are flush, and then there's a little, there's a little uh, button here you press to open the door. So it works. Uh, hopefully, it also works in winter, in ice and whatever. Let me show you in the back. Voila! And again, I tried, I, I have tested so many of the ID3s, and the ID4 has way more space. And I can't show you right now, but we have, we have panorama roof that we can open also here. Um, and also, let me show you more here. We have uh, electric adjustable seat with the uh, lumbar support, and also we can extend this one. This, okay, it doesn't work now. Shit, okay, but whatever. And we have massage, yeah. It's like a little cat massaging you. Also the same on the driver's side, uh, passenger side. Um, 
and in the back I'm gonna show you guys this is oh, am I excited or what so um, the ID4 actually has staggered options so the I think the rear tires I haven't checked in detail but the rear tires are supposed to be uh, wi slightly wider than front tires because it's a rear wheel drive I guess um, and again this is studless winter tires we're going to the north to Arctic Circle tomorrow and um, these tires are brand spanking new they are 20 inch this this car comes in 19 20 and 21 inch so it's right in the middle there yes and we have by the way drum brakes in the back here yeah <laughs> um, so I'm just gonna do the announcement right now that tomorrow which is Saturday and the day after tomorrow Sunday those two days I'm going to live stream from the ID4 <laughs> and I'm going to drive from Oslo to the Arctic Circle and back again just like I've done with the other trip, trips I'm gonna tell you soon about the whole Arctic Circle test it's going to be a standardized test uh, and we're gonna see how fast is this car going to drive the checkpoint is from here to Muirana which is 300 uh, eight, 953 kilometers from here we take the exact same route mostly exactly the same well, similar weather and so with the other cars so I'm going to come back to that but let me show you one last thing with the with the ID4 um, the backup camera on this car is not behind the logo anymore unfortunately it's it had been located down here but it has um, uh, a, a, what do you call it washer yes so we, if you wash to wipe the rear uh, window here it will also wipe the camera here so uh, uh, and this car well I have to say I like the lights here huh you like that shit do you like that shit I kind of like this shit so my impression after driving this car versus the ID3 is that it has a shit ton a lot more space we're gonna do the banana box test but you can see for obvious reasons now it's too wet so that's why I'm shuffling around and doing the, the um, uh, Arctic Circle test but this thing uh, my impression is that it has the ID4 versus ID3 is that it it's not as sporty but it's more comfortable and way more space and also it feels really comfy on the suspension and um, and um, quiet so we also have kick sensor Hoo-ya! Scheiße! Oh, shit, shit. I think... Okay, I think it's because uh, we... The, I, I buckle up behind myself there, so... We have to open it manually, yeah, yeah. So, you see, I have my sleeping hood with me. I'm gonna sleep in the car. I also brought the dumbbells. <laughs> you can use the dumbbell trick. I have Type 2 cable. See, we have the IKEA mattress. We even put these, these dices here. Uh, uh, blankets, even uh, uh, the... Ikea uh, sheep uh, skin everything fits in here and we still even have more space and I'm just gonna show you I even have um, washer wasser fluid here yeah and unfortunately for the ID3 the 12 volt outlet is here nine 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 nine, nine because I have to run the 12 volt table through the back seat here over there with an extension cord and to the front because correct me if I'm wrong but this car does not have 12 volt outlet in the front I try to search everywhere it doesn't have it and I need 12 volt outlet to charge my cameras and some of the other shit so <laughs> this is a solution for me that is a downside of the ID3 uh, the ID4 but I'm gonna show you something else okay see this one what this does click Antankekupplung, <laughs> yeah! It has tow bar, tow hitch, and in Norway it is rated for uh, 1000 kilos. In some other countries it, it is actually rated for um, 1200 kilos. And the reason for lower weight limit in Norway is because um, a Müller or Volkswagen, I don't know if it's central here. They, they have decided that because Norway has so much mountains up and down the 1000 kilo tow rating is uh, rated or approved for 12% grade uphill 
12% uphill is pretty steep with a trailer. Whereas, for example, in Denmark, it's more flat there. So maybe in Denmark, this is just an example. I don't take my word on it. In Denmark, it might be rated for 1,200 kilos. All right. So um, just going to close. Okay, let me just show now. To take the tow, tow hitch away, I know my, my pronunciation of Anthankerkoppling was a little bit miss. It's a little bit off, but hey, I'm not 100% German. I'm just half German, half Thai, half Chinese, and half Norwegian. Okay. Boom, it closes. Yes. Let's go inside. I'm going to explain now the new test procedure. So, the plan is that, like I mentioned uh, initially, tomorrow morning, uh, between 8 and 9, between 9 and 10, prob roughly, I'm going to be live streaming. Uh, this trip from Oslo to Arctic Circle and back again. We're gonna get a little bit of rain uh, Actually all the way to a little bit past Trondheim and then we get less rain And on the way back we also get fairly nice weather, but then again towards Elbrum, Alvar, we will have more rain, but the weather is fairly nice and this is the um, um, This is the 82 kilowatt hour battery pack. This is the biggest battery pack on the at least on this one as far as I know and uh, Muller told me that uh, this car under ideal conditions should be able to take 125 kilowatt which is 25 kilowatt more than the smaller 58 62 kilowatt hour pack uh, this car this one can take 125 kilowatt all the way to about 30 <laughs> percent I'm going to be riding on the Ionity wave from here, maybe I'll go to Elbrum, I'll see, and then Ionity in Aldal, Ionity at Klett, and then maybe Shurdal, I'll probably skip Shurdal, and you guys know the route. This is going to be awesome. And so, if you want to join me on the live stream, you can check it in the description below to my live stream channel. If you subscribe to it, uh, you will get a notification once I go all online. And uh, the one, okay, but it's going to be freaking long, man. We're going to live stream for about... Six, 14 to 16 hours tomorrow and also on Sunday uh, so it's it's like just for people who really want to you know, join that kind of event uh, just like twitch streamers you know uh, for more condensed information I will also be making a live I mean, I'll also be making shooting a, a road trip video then you can watch that one if you want more condensed information and there will be some music there will be the map so that one is that that road trip framework that I have you know the, the iconic music and then the, yeah <clears throat> and the okay so now we're done with the announcement of the live stream and okay but, but yeah, so the one reason to join the live stream is because the information there is fresh because I'll, I'm going to be testing some charging speeds here uh, that I will later test at uh, the doll when I'm back when I'm after this trip so if you want the freshest and the newest news and the juiciest stuff and you also want to interact with me and ask me questions about what does this feel how does that feel whatever and as long as it's safe for me to answer whether I'm at charging station or at an, a, a nice highway where I can use the auto stay this car has auto stay also then I can answer you directly. So that is one advantage of joining the live stream. You can have you can have a better interaction with me. <clears throat> so anyway, now also what I'm going to talk about last thing here is that I'm going to standardize this test because I think it it is uh, it has a value. So uh, 1,000 kilometer challenge is okay uh, somewhat synthetic. It's a synthetic synthetic test, but 1,000 kilometer challenge that I created will simulate um, a typical you know, drive from Oslo via Sweden and then Denmark and then Germany where usually you have pretty good high power um, charger coverage and you also have really good highways, motorways, 100, 120, 130 kilometers per hour speed limits. That's that kind of, that, I created that one because I think that one is relevant for many Europeans and maybe Americans. And then the range test is more like um, if you speak in um, a TDD, test driven development, um, the, the range test is a more like a unit test, where, where almost down to the function where I test one aspect of the car, which is the range only 
and I drive, I have a low 90 kilometers per hour speed test and 120 kilometers per hour speed test. And I could also include a little bit of weighing in the car and whatever. And then I have the charging test, which is also considered like a unit test, where you only test one aspect of the car, which is how fast does it charge on high power charger under ideal conditions. Okay, if you follow me now, and then, um, so th those test uh, test results, I actually use them to to estimate how fast you can travel, how fast it charges, and how far you can travel at the uh, low speed and high speed. And um, the, I realized that uh, in many countries you don't have perfect coverage of high power charging and you don't have perfect roads where you can hammer at 130, 140 kilometers per hour. And that's where the uh, uh, Arctic Circle trip, I don't want to call it test because everything I do are test really. The Arctic Circle test, test is more like not a unit test, it's more like an, a full stack integration test where you test the whole, or, the whole application or more of it, you know. Not just one unit, you kind of go through the whole workflow almost. Uh, so it means that we travel now from Oslo to, uh, to north, you guys know the route. There we have some hi highway or, or like um, motorway with 110 zone. I'm gonna go a little bit over. Usually I go about 10% over the speed limit. That's usually what the, most of the traffic flows at anyway. But then eventually after about 150 kilometers, when once we reach Elvirum, then we are down to 80 kilometers per hour zones and some places also 60 kilometers per hour. That's the reality in Norway and many other countries when you're going to go to a cabin or whatever. But then eventually you get to a little bit of highway around um, um, Trondheim. But also what is important is that we have some coverage of high power chargers like Elverum, Alvdal, uh, Klatt, Sjördal. But then the high power charger network ends for non-Tesla cars. And that's the interesting part because from there um, you have to rely on 50 kilowatt fast charger, which is actually reality for many countries. And um, from there on, we just have to then. That well, interesting part is that okay, we juice up. So, how fast can this car juice up at the high power charger? So you see, this car probably has a fairly flat curve. So, uh, it is it is it is an advantage to charge as much as you can on 50 plus kilowatt because after Trondheim. It's no man's land and you only have 50 kilowatt. And depending on the voltage on each car, some cars will actually take only about 45 kilowatt. But then this one, the ID4, ID3, fortunately has fairly high pack voltage. So at 50 kilowatt fast charger, it get flat 50 kilowatt. For example, a Tesla at a 50 kilowatt fast charger will not get 50 kilowatt. It will usually get, um, it depends on the pack, but 40, let's say 40 to 48 kilowatt on the packs with higher volt, uh, high ish voltage. And then we have also the, the 60, 75 pack with lower voltage. And then you only get <laughs> 30 to 40 kilowatt on the 50 kilowatt fast charger, but that's Tesla. All right. So, um, so the purpose is then that then we're not only measuring the pure highway hammering, the Autobahn hammering and also always charging at high power charger past Trondheim, which is around half the way halfway mark. Well, we then we get actually some juice from Trondheim so we can carry pretty far until we have to start charging on 50 kilowatt. But then the interesting, interesting part is that we then measure several aspects of each car at test because then the range will matter, right? And also the efficiency of the car matters because the more efficient car you have, the further you can actually go on 50 kilowatts. So if, let's take an example. An Ionic on 50 kilowatt will get effectively pretty good charging speed in kilometers per hour because it's so efficient. Whereas an e-tron charging on the 50 kilowatt um, is not going to get the same speed. It's <laughs> The e-tron charges almost half the speed, the practical speed of an Ionic. But of course, Ionic is smaller than e-tron, but just an example. So this is, this is what the beauty of the test is that we, we, we measure 
range in combination with voltage, how fast it charges, how flat the charging curve is. Like, you know, some cars start throttling at already at 50, 60 percent like uh, Zoe. Um, and then some cars might go more flat. I don't know what this one, hopefully this one can go uh, flat 50 kilowatt all the way to, let's say, um, 80 percent. It's a fairly big battery pack. And typically, if, uh, German cars, they tend to have fairly nice and flat charging curves. Uh, so, yeah, that's that's the thing. We are measuring lots of things. It's just, it's not, then, then it's not purely like, like with the 1000 kilometer challenge uh, with each one, it's just hammer, hammer, hammer. The car is thirsty. It doesn't matter. You have 150 kilowatt support uh, or even tie can even better. You have like usually practically you get 270 kilowatt on ionic chargers but that's not always the reality and that's the beauty of the arctic circle test that we are measuring a different scenario so long speech but i I'm, i just want to explain to you in detail the background of this test so what i've done now is that i you know i have this uh, google sheet and the google yeah my test result lots of lots of people use them you can use it for free. I don't. I don't have any copyright on it. It's just you guys, your community, support me, and I give you the data for free. Uh, I don't expect anything in return. So I've created a new tab, which is the Arctic Circle Road Trip, uh, Arctic Circle Trip, and I put in the results there that I have so far. Uh, but this is not something I'm gonna do on a regular basis with every car. Like I mentioned before. It might just be one of the one of about ten percent of the cars I test, or maybe five percent of the cars I test. I do this special one, and since I haven't been road tripping a lot, I've been home because of COVID. I feel like I have time to do it with the ID4, and I want to see how it is, because I think this is going to be really a, a popular car, and people will drive on long trips on it. So it's highly relevant to do this test. So yeah. Um, so far, the Model 3 has the best score, and uh, I think the worst one, as I, as I remember, is the, um, the Polestar. The reason for it is because the Polestar is kind of thirsty, uh, so it suffers a little bit, and it has somewhat, sh well, not the best range also. So, uh, I'm not sure which one we're going to try to match now, but uh, hopefully we're going to go from Oslo to the checkpoint. Not the endpoint, but the checkpoint is at Moirana. So I'm gonna charge just enough to get over to Moirana. Bam! And I think now let's ask the, the audience how long do you think it's gonna take versus you have seen the result of the other cars now. And tomorrow is gonna be a little bit raining and not the best weather. It's it's winter-ish, starting to be a little bit spring. So my prediction is 14 hours. Yeah. Uh, one hour faster than Polestar. So what do you guys think? How many hours do we need to drive 953 kilometers? Remember, this is Norway. We have to drive in pretty slow, slow places, some places. So, uh, long video, but uh, good shit. I hope I see you guys in the live stream this weekend. We're gonna have lots of fun. We're gonna talk. We're gonna listen to music, rock music. We're gonna listen to the lavish always be clubbing abc i will try to say my voice and not don't not talk too much uh, safety first all of that shit i brought i'm gonna bring food i have polar bread i have drinks with me trying to eat healthy a sandwich everything so this is gonna be a full-blown road trip but again if you don't have time for it no worries just watch the more condensed road trip video so yes, uh, now this is the introduction of this test. I might make a similar video of, and explain what the range test is, what the 1000 km challenge is, what the yellow test is, why do I do the banana box test and all that. But okay, everything in time. So that's gonna be it for now. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, thank you for watching and talk to you later.